Hey, brothers and sisters, what's up? This is the Reluctant Nabi back again. And uh, this is going to be kind of a beautiful video and a real critique on the state of the Afro community everywhere. All right. Now, keep in mind that the state of the Afro community is in shambles everywhere because a lot of people within said community have been trained to accept mediocrity or evil as the standard for our particular community that is the Afro people they work so hard to try to keep you on the plantation and if you really leave the plantation and start discussing things with intact families, you will find that they see the same thing as the Afro brothers do in America. Beautiful family you see back there, huh? Um, I met them today, tonight. They were taking pictures and I knew that for the phones that they were using that the phone that I'm using this is the OnePlus 7 Pro all right it just uh, as you can see all these pictures that you're about to see in here was taken with the OnePlus 7 Pro on different settings all right it wasn't settings that I went in to try to operate they were just different settings that you press a button and point and shoot Hold on for a second. So, um, what happened is, and what you see here, is you see that I invited the family to my room to give the son one of the soccer balls, but also to give something to the mother and father. Uh, because he, a lot of the Brazilians love perfume, and so... One of the things that I did with my funding is all the people that was of help, male and females, uh, I went and just got, you know, I got a bunch of these that, that come in sets of three or four, right? Because, and I went to the PX, I tried to go right after um, New Year so I could catch sales. <clears throat> So that's how I decided to be a blessing to um, the people here in Brazil. And so as you heard in the earlier video, the woman at the desk, all right, and you try to hear what she, she thinks is going on, I think a lot of them miss this point that I'm gonna point out right here. You see this intact family. We had a discussion while we were standing around. Um, they thought it was strange that I do what I do, but they they just like, yeah, you, cool brother, right? And a lot of people don't understand the impact of brothers just showing up because you never know when you'll run across other brothers and it felt good, as good to me to see them as it did for the son, especially to see me and the daughters too. So they took a whole lot of pictures with me, uh, Americana, <laughs> Father Portuguese and stuff and stuff. So that's how that went. So before I forget, let me greet everybody real quick. Havorten Hardugu da Ola Oi to the Bank, Vasas Los, Bonja Mezami, Keda Bawani Kunichiwa. So, um, the setting that you see in the back, I took, and um, the all these pictures I took with my OnePlus 7 Pro. I'm shouting them out because these were some good pictures, right? But as this went on, this is the culmination of the conversation that I had with the sister earlier today that was at work and some of you don't under probably didn't understand so i'll break it down 
what we were saying, and then I'll break down what we, what I was talking to this family about. All right. But first, let me remind you. Let's get those thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. When you subscribe, click the notification bell. All right. To donate to my channel, my cash app and my PayPal me will be in the description box along with my email address just in case you just want to holler at a brother. Highly encouraged. All right. So the other thing I want to remind you of since there's a lot of new people coming in that on this channel, we wish or I wish for you to take care of yourself and family first before you donate to anybody. The stuff that I'm giving away, I buy in advance and I buy a little bit at a, at a time because I know what I'm trying to do. So that kind of, you know, helps me out a little bit. Now, when you donate, that helps me out a lot. But it will you not donating will not stop me from what I am doing. You not donating is not going to stop the videos coming up. Now, I will say this more important than that, especially if you don't have it is very important that you share the videos because that could stop the channel. Us getting complacent and letting people that's taking the channel down or people that's squashing the voices um, have the freedom to do that because we're not sharing. We're not getting them thumbs up. Think about that. All right. So let's get more into the breakdown now. So um, after the conversation uh, with the woman working at the front desk, I went out to one of the stores to give a soccer ball to, I guess, the last person left in the store. I was also looking for the children that just show up, but um, it was raining today. All right. And so I'll catch them tomorrow. In the meantime, I ran across this family while I was up on the roof getting this picture right here. All right. And I took a few pictures of them and they put the pictures that I took of them to the Instagram. I'm going to let them know that um, I'm a fe I featured them in um, this video. I told them so they got my channel and everything. We talked about it. And one of the things we talked about and understand how the mom is in agreement. The mom was in agreement. The daughters were there. And I was having this conversation. First of all, I am impressed with myself that I was able to have this conversation primarily in Portuguese. I'm like, dang. I give Somina, Francisco, and the brothers at the airport this. They have really helped me come a long way with my Portuguese. But anyway. So... The, and they do on the spot correction. So thank you to my brothers out in the airport. Thank you, Samina. Thank you, Francisco. All right. And even Mimi. All right. For, for a while when I was with Mimi. So even Mimi. So I'm having a conversation. We're having this conversation here, a serious conversation. Um, family to brother explaining what my channel is about because they asked, right? And then we, it turned into a discussion and at the end of the discussion, I was just amazed at how clear that Afro people that have intact families, that means mother, father, children, understand the plight of the Afro community and how bad it has um, gotten. And they understand exactly why it's that way. But on the other hand, when you look at the single mom, reformed females, all right, and they're really not reformed, but when you look at the Smurfs, when you look in the Afro community and look at the women that say they're the backbone, they are saying that in the midst of so much destruction, while on the other hand saying how much they need us to come back. And we keep saying, come back to what? We have created none of this with you. 
Had you listened to us, none of the things that you're going through would exist to the level that it exists. Period. And it just floors me because the difference is here that women who we can take as wives understand this. There is no child support to say down here. So we spiritually can take these women as wives. We can go other places and take the women as wives. In the United States, we cannot take the average BAW as a wife because the choices she made disqualify her from being the wife of another man without them actually committing adultery. Let me break this down again. Adultery, the biblical definition of adultery is when a man lays with another man's wife. If a man is the steward over a wife by giving her money, whether it's court regulated or whatever, for a child that he made with her, he is then still her husband. He is her husband until she severs herself completely from that relationship. If she keeps the child, she is still in that relationship. If she keeps the child, and there's a caveat, if she keeps the child and he's paying child support, she is in a marriage with the man to whom she is receiving child support. And the more men that she is receiving child support from, that's how many husbands she has, which means she is guilty of adultery. And any and the second, third, and fourth husband is guilty of adultery against the first husband. These women don't want to understand that because, you know, it takes away their finances, their money, it calls them out and it spiritually, it spiritually judges them for the sin that not only that they've committed against the first man, but against the most high himself. When he says, don't do this mess. So we get back to this family here. All right. And this family, when we were having this discussion, that's the father way back in the back, right? With the son. All right. When we were having the discussion, oh, wow, she had my name showing. I wonder if she did that on purpose. I bet you she did. All right. I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this about the brothers here. And the sisters here and the families here. When they find that an Afro man has come here and he's doing something, right? And they see that he's doing something, they are excited about it. They are just, ex just as excited to meet us as we are to come here. All right. They don't understand. We are really, really excited to come here. And we're like, man, we're going here to see them. And they're like, hey, they came here and we want to see them. We are excited to see each other. All right. And so basically this is what's going on. Um, they're having fun here. I'm having fun here, watching them have fun here. And it's kind of cool. All right. All the sons, I'm at, I'm at brothers, this is the impact of brothers that travel. This is the impact of brothers from America that travel. All the sons want to take pictures with you. You would think that I was some kind of a sports star. See, that's impact. All right. To see this man have this intact family. All right, that's impact. All those are his children. That's impact. 
You understand? That's how it's supposed to be, but it never, in the United States, it can't get that way, way anymore because we are out of option because so much of the population of Afro women in the United States are not suitable by the commandments for any type of relationship. One, because of the mere fact that they're receiving child support. And they're not giving that up. All right. They're, meaning that they're not fully single. They're not fully free. All right. And this is what we have to understand. The Most High said that it basically, if a woman has a husband, you can't mess with her. The definition of a husband is a dude that's paying child support. Whether the court ordered it or not, he had a child with her and he's still taking care of that child, whether he's forced to or not. And while a man can have another wife, the woman cannot have another husband. That's adultery. And the second and third husbands that she had children from, she getting child support. There, This is the curse of the Afro family in the United States. The curse is we are we've been trained and conditioned to folly in sin because that's how the women wanted us as men to be in sin against the most high. But we as men could have been said, you know what? No, nah, we ain't having this. You get child, but we didn't know better because we were taught by who? Oh yeah, our mama's black. This is why they wanted the Afro men, the spiritual men, out of the house. How do you take down the house? How do you take down the home? You bind the strong man. So, in the meantime, you got a brother with a healthy family, with children having fun, that are excited about a lot of things. Um, we're all Flemingistas, all right? When they found out I'm, I'm a Flemingista, they was like, oh man, that floored them even more, right? But we're all Flemingistas. And that goes a long way. <laughs> all right. And so this was a very exciting time. And we're probably going to meet up tomorrow. But see, these aren't the only people I met. But I can say the impact that we each made on each other's life was palpable. As we were doing the scenery and stuff, again, the ease in which it was for us to meet each other and conversate with each other. <sighs> Y'all, I'm saying the ease in which we were able to meet with each other and conversate with each other. L let me straighten this out. As the woman was taking a picture of her daughter, I suggested she could use my camera and the son, I don't know how to use Instagram, but the son put it on Instagram, right? So we gave him the phone, he put it on Instagram and all the rest of that stuff. The ease to meet people here, just in general conversation, given the fact that we can't even say hi to a melanated woman in the United States walking down the street, you bet not say hi. And because of me too, we can't say anything to them. We shouldn't say anything to them. Because they determine what is harassment or not by whether they like you or not. There's no real rules for that. They control in everything that you say so we can control not to ever speak to them again. There's that wall, the wall of justice. See, because nobody is holding them accountable and they want to act like they're not the cause of 
was going on, but everybody else can see it. The couple see it in Brazil. I bet you more than just us Afro men are seeing it in America. Here's the thing. The only people that want to argue the issue that's plain in their face are the ones that's buying into the, oh, I'm equal to the man. I'm the man too. And when they're doing that, what they're saying is they are significant. The man is not significant. They don't need the man. They could be both. But in the same breath, they turn around and ask you for your help. They say and they love you. Now, now that they made all these mistakes and they need you to come and clean their mess up so they can do it to you again. Trust me on this one. We shouldn't help them. We should not help them with anything because we know that history has shown us that once we give that help in hand, they get out of the bind. They'll go back to Pookie and them. They'll kick you to the curb, wipe the, the dust of you off their feet, and do it again until they get to the breakdown again and need the help again. See, that's basically it. Because in the mentality of these women that want to be perpetually single because they think that they could get our resources but still be in charge of us and themselves. In other words, they don't care that they're wrecking everything. They don't care. And worse yet, they try to not see that they're the problem. But it's funny how the families that are intact see clearly what the problem is. And that we can have that. I can have this discussion with men. I can have this discussion with families. But even with the single females here when you know what you're talking about and now that i can kind of express myself in portuguese you see what happened in the conversation when i start pointing out all the facts you see how i got her off that me too thing that she was trying to hold on to and and you see how i told her you really don't know what's going on all right you do, really don't know what the truth is. And I say the, the, um, the situation is probably different here in Brazil. And I could go with that because I've been here to know enough that there's some situations here. But a lot of the situations here are self-inflicted. That's what we were discussing. That's what we were discussing. As the daughter was having fun, you know, pre-model, <laughs> pre-modeling, pre-career modeling thing. I don't know. They, they, it's like this. But here's the thing. I point this out because this is a purely feminine trait. They take pride in wanting to be feminine. They take pride at a young age at wanting to be a female. The mother is teaching this. This is what you have. I gave them both. They, they call everything perfume. There's no perfume cologne. There's perfume for men, perfume for women. Right? But I gave them both something. And the dude, the, the kind I gave the brother, he said, man, these things are cool. Right? I gave him the cigar looking ones that I got at City Trend. Hold on. go pick these up I gave him these these things smell good right all right every time I see these things at city trend because these smell good these Cuban Cuban cologne these things smell good but I gave him these he's like man this is the bomb this is the bomb
right? He was like, at first, these are cigars. Nah. All right. But then earlier into the day, I went and I met her at the store. So we clowning around with pics, right? And we were getting kind of close. So I got to I gotta make that work. All right. So we switched. We, we got our little messenger things. All right. Very beautiful woman. Very beautiful woman. And we're going to help each other out. I'm going to help her with her English. She's going to help me with her, my Portuguese. All right. Um, she explained to me the schools here, too. So that was a help. Again, very easy to meet people here. Very easy to meet people here. If you learn a little bit of the language, sooner or later, if you keep coming back enough, with the tutelage of the people that are eager to teach you um, things, if you're willing to learn, oh, you can get along here. All right. So we are supposed to go somewhere next Friday. Um, and I'll probably see her Sunday because she's off tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So I know her schedule. See what I'm saying? And so so if I want to go and solidify plans or see some other things and stuff like that. All right. Now we got a line of communication open. Why? Because this is what nice people do. Um, man, a brother had this nice quote. I'm going to see if I can find it real quick. Um, something about, I hope I can find it. But he was saying that Oh, no, 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 no. I know where he had it at. But he was saying, uh, if you look at the BAW and how they like to take their picture, right? Hopefully I can find it. Hold on. But he was saying that the backside they pre they present with their backside and they're they're going to be the head of that or something like that I, I hold on let me see if i can find this quote real quick i hope i can dang i'm messing up now trying to find this quote real quick oh come on i know it ain't I'm trying not to be around here for this carnival stuff, and they starting to kick it off, right? Let me just say this. It's January, man. I'll be telling you, mate, it's January. All right. Um, um, one guy said, I don't want... I." I the BAW is right. I can't handle and won't handle anything stronger than me. All right. And see, this is where they're missing out. Um, uh, I know who put, I know, I know who had it up. I know. Okay. I know how to find it. All right. And so one of the brothers, he, um, so a few weeks ago, per year, sent me this. Moses. All right. He had this comment up, and in the comment, he said that the, the BAW want to present with their backside. The Caucasians don't, right? He said if they want to be about their backside, let them be about that, all right? They want to present their backside, but not happiness. And something to the tune that the Caucasians want to present happiness instead of their backside. All right, hold on for a second. Let me find it. Okay, I couldn't find it, but let me just say this before I be out. You got a beautiful family and a beautiful place, but you got brothers running in droves down here 
and chances are they won't talk to any um, find somebody that looked like this but it's possible all right but the question is who's holding them accountable why ain't nobody holding these BAWs accountable except for the minority of brothers and by nobody I mean why aren't other women holding these BAWs accountable with that said I'm out